What's up everyone, April Dunham here. This video is all about Microsoft Flow, specifically how you can create ICS calendar invites with Flow and send those out. And you might be wondering why you wouldn't just use the create event action through the Microsoft Outlook connector. Well, there's some scenarios where that might not be ideal. The scenario that came up for me for a particular client was they were using SharePoint for a class registration system. So they had internal training and they wanted to be able to allow users to sign up for a class. And when they did, they would get an email confirmation and they would be able to add that to their calendar with the ICS invite attached. So that's just one example of what you might use this approach for, but of course there are many others. We're going to walk through all the steps involved in making this flow work for the ICS calendar invites in this video. But first, here's the intro. Before we dive into the flow, let's take a look at the backend setup first so you have a good basic understanding of that. In SharePoint Online, I have two lists, one for courses and one for registration. The goal of this process is you can add new courses here in the course list and a user can come in, look at the different courses available and register for a particular course. Now, you'll notice this course list looks a little bit different. I'm using SharePoint view formatting here to format the list to make it look a little bit more appealing. So here, if a user comes in and they want to sign up for a class, they can click register. This is actually going to execute a flow. So one of the things you can do with SharePoint list formatting is have it run a flow for the selected item. So when the user clicks register, they just click run flow to confirm the registration that kicks off the flow. And this flow is going to first deduct um, one from the number of allowed seats in a course because these courses might only have space for 20 people. So they need to keep track of when these courses fill up. So the flow will handle that automatically. And it's also going to add an item in the registrations list so the users can come in and see which classes they're registered for. And then, of course, it's going to go and automatically create an ICS calendar invite for that course when the user registers. And it will send them an email confirmation that they have signed up for this course with that ICS calendar invite attached. Now let's jump over to the flow and see how this is all put together. Now, as I mentioned before, the trigger for this is for a selected item, reporting it to that courses list. And then we want to do a get item so we can get the actual details from that course because we want to use those details in our ICS calendar invite. I'm going to skip through some of this stuff and we'll just look at the actions that are getting the ICS formatting. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our start date and end dates for these course events are in the correct format. So in SharePoint, when these come in, they'll be formatted with the year, year, hyphen, month, hyphen, date, and then you'll have the time with the semicolon. For these ICS events, they actually need to be single strings without any special characters. So we need to do an expression and flow to strip out the hyphens and the colons from that date time so that the ICS invite works correctly. We can do that with this expression here, which is a nested replace expression. So really what you can do is say replace, replace, pass in the date from your SharePoint list item in this case, right? That has my start date. First, we're going to look for any hyphens and remove those. And then we'll look for any colons there and remove those as well. So we need to do that first for the start time and then for the end time. And we're using the compose action to store this value. So we have this one for the start time, and we're doing that same thing for the end time, except we're just pointing the item to the end date instead of the start date. So the same exact formula, though. Now that those dates are formatted correctly, we can go in and create the code, per se, for the ICS calendar invite. Now we'll do that with another compose action here. To add a new action, if you're not super familiar with Flow, click on the plus button, add an action, and since we know we want to compose, you can just search for compose here. 
and that's this right here, Compose Data Operations. So just click that and it will be added to your screen. So here in the format ICS Compose Action is the format that is expected for an ICS calendar invite. In the notes for this video, I will have a link to my GitHub that has the file, which has this format there. So you can just copy and paste that into your flow. But essentially, all we have here, there's some things that you'll need to put values in. So you'll have a URL. So if you want to link the user and the calendar invite to more information about this course, for example, you can pass it in a hyperlink in this URL field. And then the important ones though that we need to fill out are these dstart and then dt end. So you need to put those, the dt start will need to be our compose where we did the format start time. And the dt end will be the compose output of the format end time. And the summary will be the uh, title of the event and the description will be in the body there. Um, so in my case, the title was the title of the course in my SharePoint list. And then I also had a description field that had more information about the course, which I'll pass in and map it to the description property here. So that's the actual format, but now we need to create the physical file so that we can attach it to the email. That's what we're doing down here in the SharePoint create a file action. It doesn't really matter where you store the file as long as you can access it and attach it via the email. Now in my case, since we're already using SharePoint for this registration system, it makes sense to just use that same training site, um, the document library there to store that in. So I'm just inserting a create file action, choosing my document library name. And then when you create a file, you have to pass it in a file name and the content. Now the content is easy. It's going to be the output of our compose here where we did the format ICS. So you'll just click into the file content here, find your format ICS output and map that there. Uh, the file name can be whatever you want, but you'll obviously want to make sure that it is unique. All I'm doing here is I'm taking the title from my SharePoint course list and I'm putting in a timestamp of when that was created. So it will be a unique file name. And then you have to do a .ics so that it knows the file format type that it is. That's all that you need to do to create the physical file. The next thing we need to do to attach a file to an email, you have to get its file content. So we've created the physical file, but we need to insert another SharePoint get file content action to get the content of the file we just created. So you just map that to your list there or your library and pass it in the file identifier, which we already have here from our create file action. Now we have everything that we need to send that email with the attachment. So this is really pretty simple as you can see. So just insert a create an email action, put in your to in your subject, and then click on the show advanced options so that we can see the attachment section. Now, since in this same flow up above, we're creating the physical file for the ICS invite, for the attachment name, we can just point it to our create file and name property. So that will get in the correct name. And then for the attachment content, we'll point it to that get file content action we just added to get the ICS attachment content. And that is all that is needed. Let's jump back over to the SharePoint list and test this out. So I will sign up for this SharePoint site owners class. Click my register button and we'll click run flow to kick off that flow we just looked at. All right now I should be getting an email any minute here. All right, so here's the email in my Outlook web client. I get the confirmation that I have signed up for this course. There's the attached calendar invite. I can preview that. I'm getting the date of the course, so four to five on the 24th. And there's a description pulled in from my SharePoint list with the name of the course here. And I can click add to calendar and that will automatically add this invite to my calendar here. All right, there we go. That's really all there is to it. This is a great way to handle sending out calendar invites. It's not tied to any persons who created the Flows account or, or their calendar. It's completely separate. You can send this calendar invite to multiple people, allow them to download it, add it to their calendar. It's really useful in a, a registration type scenario like we just saw here. 
um, among other situations. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.